I doubt it. I don't think anything's ever interesting on this show. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 128, take two. For Thursday, the 18th of May, 2017. This is a show where two lifelong friends and their guests celebrate all things geek. I'm Amos, that's Kent, and the one pulling chalks in the middle of the screen, that's SP. It's Stargate Pioneer. How are you doing today? Awesome. It's great to be here. Second podcast of the day, and I just can't wait to do more. <laughs> well, I mean... Take two of podcast two. Here we go. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, man. This is awesome. It's Thursday night. It's time for Ritual Misery. I'm so glad to be here. I'm thrilled to have Stargate Pioneer here. He is a known quantity of the Gun and Geek Network, and uh, we are glad to have him here on DiamondClub.tv. What's going on, man? So thankful to be here. Thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, I'm the vice president of network development of GunnyGeek.com. I also have not one, not two, not three, not four, but five weekly podcast and that is three too much but we'll get to that later <laughs> awesome awesome amos how you doing man um so a little bit of pain in my leg mm, that's yeah. normal right it, uh, i mean yeah i know not really um so okay. last friday i was supposed to have my knee surgery I get a call at like 7.30 in the morning and say, hey, can you come in at 9 instead of like 1.30 or whatever? And I was like, yeah, let's go ahead and get this shit done. Why? Because I can't eat since midnight, so I'm fucking starving, right? Um, then yeah. they, they call me up at like 8.30. We're getting ready to leave to the to the hospital because it's like five minutes down the road. We're getting ready to leave the hospital, get another phone call. and say, hey, uh, the grafts that, um, that they're supposed to put in your knee, somebody didn't storm right overnight, so we may have to toss them and, and reschedule. Okay, great. So I'm on standby. Just wait, 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 wait. About one o'clock rolls around. I'm starting to get pretty damn impatient. They call me again. Said, "Yeah, um, your 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 uh, your uh, doctor is going to give you a call, and he'll tell you exactly what's going to happen when you're when everything else." I'm like, "Okay, cool. Um, can mm -hmm. I eat?" They're like, "Wait until he gives you the call." So here uh -huh. it is at two thirty in the afternoon or something like that. That he calls me. I haven't eaten since midnight the night before, and you know, fat kids, we got to eat. Um, <laughs> And, I was uh, gonna say this has to be torture for you because even when you're when we're on vacation, drunk as hell the night before, get four hours of sleep. The first thing you think about is I got to get down the street and get me some tacos. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. That's I mean, who are we kidding? Or right? is it, or is it Wendy's? Oh uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> why are you bringing up old shit? Yeah, why are you bringing up old shit? <laughs> um, so, uh, so yeah, he calls me up a little after two and he's like, "Yeah, we're gonna scratch it. We gotta go and." We're going to do it on Wednesday. They're flying a new sample in and blah, 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 blah. Um, yeah, good times. So then I get a phone call. The day before, on, on Tuesday afternoon, I get a phone call from the same nurse that called me on Thursday telling me what time the surgery is. And mm -hmm. she calls, and I was like, hello, how are you? And she's like, oh, I'm doing good. Is this uh, Mr. Lemos? And I was like, yeah. And she's like, I think we've had this conversation before. <laughs> and I was like, we have. <laughs> well, sure as shit, the next morning they call me. They're like, hey. Can you come in early? Like we've we've played this before. Like, is this realsies this time or is it like half assies? And yeah, right. um, because you want your eleven Z's. Right, right. I, I want my fourth breakfast. I don't know what, what the hell's going on. <laughs> right. <laughs> <clears throat> um, but yeah, so we we get to the hospital and the, my doctor is doing two surgeries that day. The one previous to mine and then mine. Mm. Um, the one before us, before me, had complications. There's a, re, a shoulder rebuild or something like that, and they had complications. So theirs oh. took like six hours. Meanwhile, that extra four hours I was sitting there just starving my ass off watching previews on iTunes because I can't get enough reception to watch even YouTube. But the previews are coming through. <laughs> so that's what I spent my time doing. Um, got the surgery, got out, and of course, we didn't get home till like 10 o'clock at night by the time I, I woke up because sedatives do wonders for me. Mm -hmm. um, if you that's were to good. roofie me, I wouldn't know for like four days because I wouldn't be awake. <laughs> Like that's, yeah, that's, that's me too. I can't do it. I think I had a, I think I had a Tylenol three, like, I don't know, 15 years ago or something like that. And, uh, I just woke up. Mm. Uh, no, it, like, <laughs> seriously, I was out for like a day and a half mm. from like just a single Tylenol. Three. Yeah. Be, people take like NyQuil and stuff like that. Can't do it. Like I cannot take any kind of sleep aid or, or, uh, pain depressant or anything like that. If I have somewhere to be in the next 24 hours without yep. someone there to remind me to get up because it's not same, happening. Same. 
same same sp what, what about you man are you um are you immune to the effects of of pain oh no no as a matter of fact i can't sleep sitting up so if i ever have an international flight and of course nobody pops for a first class seat for the sp right <laughs> so if i ever have an international flight i'm taking some meds and i'm knocking myself out because if not I just like, oh, and then mm. the, do the reptilian head bob and yep. you become really friends with the guy next to you and you put your head on his shoulder and right. that sort of thing. Yeah. No, no, no. Just put me out and I'll wake up when I'm on the other side of the world. Yeah. Like it, B.A. Baracus. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, it, and it doesn't help that I actually have some anxiety on the plane. Like there's there's a certain level of realization in my mind that says I'm in a metal straw flying 35,000 feet above any hope of landing. Um so I get yeah, I mean, it's still I, the I, safest form of travel. It, it is, but I still get nervous about it because I'm not in any kind of control in any way whatsoever. And I can't sleep on planes. I can't because I'm too tall to let my head on the little thing because it just like does this number here. And I'm too tall to lean forward and put like curl up on the on the tray. So I basically just have to suck it up and sit there. And then people are like, oh, well, why don't you sit next to the window? Then you got a wall. You can sit. You can curl yourself. No. No, because something about having that little handle right there digging into my ribs while I'm trying to catch six hours of sleep on an eight-hour flight. See, that's that's uh, yeah. You, you complain too much. There, there's there's too much going on there. Me, I'm the exact opposite. I get on an airplane, it's like it might as well be a time machine, because I'm asleep before we even taxi, and then I wake up as people are getting their bags out of the overhead. <laughs> I, I, you wake up as people are getting their bags out of baggage claim. <laughs> that actually happened to me one time. I woke up and there was no one on the plane. <laughs> Holy crap. So, how many yeah. of those little bottles did you buy? How, how many? <laughs> oh, yeah. Are we talking about there? Is, See, my, have... my Achilles Achille heels is the uh, helicopter. I'm a rocket scientist. I know the Bernoulli principle that keeps those in the air, mm -hmm. but it doesn't seem right to me. There's no <laughs> wings. You've just got this thing that's going woo, 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 woo around. I'm convinced that somebody somewhere is going to run some sort of computer program somewhere and go, oh, my gosh, we are not allowed to do this anymore the principle the Bernoulli principle it's wrong it's false we just proved it false and then all the helicopters in the entire world will just go boom and fall out of the sky and I will happen to be on a helicopter at that particular moment mm. yeah that would just be your luck man well, that would god my luck I'd be, be walking along the street and the helicopter directly above me would have that happen land on me that's, yeah. That, yeah that's, that's that would, where my yeah, luck comes be, in I'd have like two of them land on my house <laughs> <laughs> but you but you wouldn't be home just like the mortars when uh, in in Afghanistan um, oh, you, you'd be outside smoking and your house would get bombed. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, the mortar incident was, was, Iraq, but well, anyway, we won't get into that. Yeah. Right uh, <laughs> speaking of different, different places around the world though, man. So the, earlier this week I had kind of a scare. Uh, I was, uh, I don't even remember what I was doing, but my phone starts going crazy. I'm like, what the heck's going on? I look at my phone and it says, um, an unknown device is attempting to log in to your uh, Apple account, your uh, Apple ID. I was like, that's odd. I had, you know, I haven't, I haven't tried to uh, activate a new device or anything lately. So I, I, I got on the computer. It said that in uh, Hot Springs, Virginia, uh -oh. someone was attempting to log in to, uh, like, to into my account on a browser, on a Windows system. The last time that I tried to log in, or the last time I logged into my Apple ID on a browser was probably, oh my God, a year and a half ago or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I never use Windows. You've never used the, the Find My iPhone thing on iCloud or anything like that? I've used that with another device. Like, uh, like I'll find my phone with my iPad or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, yeah, it, it, it's something I never do. So... I was like, okay, this this is bullshit. So, you know, deny access, and then would you like to change your password? Hell, yes, I would. So then I go through this process. I change my password, and then, of course, I have to change it on all of my other devices. Mm -hmm. And then, I, so I go, I then go to my phone, and I activate it, and then I get a pop-up, like, oh, a device is trying to access your, your account. I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, yes, yeah. allow, okay, fine. Go to the next device, same thing, all over again. Um, so, yeah, somebody, I guess, was trying to hack my stuff because, as, at, like, right before I changed my password, both my iPhone and my iPad mini went into lost mode. 
<laughs> and I was like, uh, nope. <laughs> so I changed Doesn't the password, that... and then I found my devices in New Mexico, of course. But mm. every time I would log in to, like, in particular, so my Apple TV, when I logged into that, I got the pop-up again. Mm -hmm. Someone is trying to log into your account mm -hmm. from a device in Hot Springs, Virginia. What the hell? So I changed my pa I ended up changing my password like four times or something that Jesus. night. But it's, for whatever reason, it's glitching. Like every time I log into an account, it says it's in Hot Springs, Virginia. And I don't know what I Googled it. Like there is See, no affiliation between this, this is this is one of those things where in Hot Springs, Virginia. This is one of those things where um, it's it's coming full circle because a month ago I switched over to the two factor authentication and I was trying to explain this to you, Kent. You're like, that doesn't seem right. That doesn't seem right. That doesn't seem right. And now you're going, this doesn't seem right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. So Cause, well, so cause then, for like there two was weeks, that. every yeah, time so someone tried to access an iDevice that's on our family share plan. It, like every single time for two weeks straight, I mean, my wife would pick up her phone, wouldn't be able to get into it until I okayed that she was trying to get it. I was like, you right. got to be kidding me right now. It was the worst two weeks as far as Apple goes ever. So Yes. Now, yeah. SP, I mean, are I'm you glad, a Windows guy or Apple guy? Glad, yeah, I'm, I'm glad those things are there, but wow, was that, was that an annoying two days. Uh, SP, crazy. are you a Windows guy or an Apple guy? I'm a Windows guy, but I use iOS devices around the house, cause mostly because of the family. My sister, she's 10 years younger, and she's mentally handicapped. She can actually, she's got an IQ that's less than 20. Hmm. She can use her iPad. We got her an iPad a few years ago. We need to do another one to hmm. update her. But she can actually use it, and she can, I get calls 2 a.m., and it's my sister who doesn't sleep very much, and she's just like, ah! like okay party time and i will answer every single time she calls right every single time so yep uh i'm on, on the ios on mobile and uh, windows 10 which has been yeah, let's say less than stellar since it came out really and that's the devices i use See, once again i am in this world where i i prefer apple on everything but my beast the the streaming computer i have right here that i'm using that, I'm, that i built for this purpose is running Windows because I didn't have enough time to get the Hackintosh part going. But mm -hmm. that forced me to use Windows 10, and I have had nothing but success with Windows 10 on this machine. And yeah, both uh, my, both like my me, sons use Me and Windows one other 10. dude have that, and I don't know why it's just us that, that have this perfect experience in Windows 10. Yeah, but both of my sons use Windows 10. and Never a problem. No issues. See? Yeah, no issues. It's just, it's just like uh, Windows 7 and Windows XP. Like You may not have any problems at all, or it's complete crap. There's no middle ground. Either it's not working for you or it's perfect. Well, if you're using Windows XP now, you're going to want to cry. That's for sure. Hey, they guys, actually, I wanna, I, I wanna, Microsoft I, just patched that, actually, for Windows they XP. Did. Yeah, for, they did in the enterprise version. I want to back up to the passwords just really quick. Have you guys talked about LastPass at all? Um, la, so, well, so we have it. I, I, I actually use, I use which, wait, which one do I use? I use a LastPass. Pa yeah, so LastPass or some sort of password storage, mm -hmm. uh, you can rotate the password. So if you come up with an issue like you just had and you're continually having to log into the device and changing passwords, you can just have it where you, you generate a new password and bingo, mm -hmm. you can use it on your device. So it's it's really easy, especially if you're getting hacked, to make even a stronger password. I um, just wanted to point that out to those security conscious listeners that you guys have. You know, they just, <laughs> they just came out not too long ago and uh, who, well, shit, somebody... Somebody was saying that instead of making them up, uh, uppercase, lowercase, number, a symbol, and, and 42 characters long, just make it really long. It can be anything you want. Just make it really long because you get the same effect, and it's easier to remember so you're not changing your password as often, which means you're not as likely to use the same password over and over again. Um, but, yeah, I use LastPass. And my favorite thing about LastPass is if it's a website that it knows, like it, it knows Amazon and it knows Netflix and everything else, you don't have to go into Netflix to change your, your password. You tell LastPass, hey, Change this password, it makes a new one, saves the new one in LastPass, and you don't have to worry about it anymore. And it makes it completely random. Well, I mean, of course, RNGs, but you know, it makes it random. So that, just that alone is amazing to me that it can it can log into the site, change its, the password for it, and save that password, and you don't have to worry about it. Yeah, all my passwords are RMP is cool, RMP is cool, RMP is cool, RMP is cool. That's that's all it is. RMP is that's cool. A, it's it's got to be forty two times. Really though. good password. 
Um, uh, no, this that's really good advice, though. And uh, yeah, I want to encourage everyone: strong passwords. Use a password manager if um, if you want to. If you um, if that works for you, uh, but definitely make make strong passwords. Make long passwords uh, and uh, for the able two factor authentication on everything. Uh, another do. another point of record. Uh, anytime Ken says if that works for you, it means he's not going to do it. <laughs> uh, you're on to me. I uh, figured it was the RMP drinking game. <laughs> yeah, that's a you no know to I mean. Anytime I say you know to I mean, you got to take a shot. That's what that is. Um, <laughs> wow. Now, so, SP, SP I got to ask you. You you said that uh, you were in the iOS realm for for mobile devices. Have you gotten into the uh, wearable? No, unfortunately, yeah. I can't wear anything on my wrists. I can't wear it's nerve damage. I can't wear any watches, or whatever. But my family, I got my wife a Apple Watch last like a year and a half ago for Christmas, right? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, the Apple Watch 2 was out. We just had Mother's Day and I was having a real hard time trying to get her. So she needed a new iron. So I got her a new iron. It was like a digital computerized iron. She loves it, but it was an iron, right? Is it so Bluetooth? Like, 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 can you see it through your phone? Things? Is it connected? <laughs> <laughs> it might be. I wasn't there with the setup, so we'll see. <laughs> but I also was like, you know, um, the Apple Watch 2 is out. It's waterproof. It's got GPS. I'll do that. So, yes, yeah, Mother's Day. I gave her her Apple Watch 2 and then began the setup hell. <laughs> Let me tell you, there are no instructions that come with the Apple Watch. I had to Google. I think it was Mac 9 to 5 that gave the most relevant uh, instructions on how to do it. But those were even wrong because I wasn't just setting up a new Apple Watch, I was replacing an Apple Watch. Mm. And I discovered, by the way, that you can have two, at least two, I don't know, maybe more, you can have two associated with your same mobile device. So that's pretty cool, mm. right? Well, in order to do all of this, everything has to be up to date. And you think my wife would keep her iOS up to date? Guess not. <laughs> no, no. And, and it was the big 10.3 iOS, so it took oh. like 45 minutes to update that. And then the iOS on the watch needed to be updated. And that's just to back up the watch, because you have to back up the watch in order to transfer it mm. to the new watch. So all this, it literally took two and a half days to give my wife a new present of an Apple Watch. I love the <laughs> Apple devices. They're very simple, like I said before, but Setting up the Apple Watch was ridiculously hard. Mm. I miss Steve Jobs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, we all do. Yeah, setting up a new watch, however, like if, if Kent were to get a watch, it's it's only like a five minute process. Like you point the camera at this at the screen at, at the uh, watch screen. It has this little wiggly thing going on, and bloop bloop bloop, be bop boop, and it's done. And then you you got a watch, you got got your watch. Now you got to go through and turn all your notifications off because they're all on by default. But setting up a mm. new watch is easy peasy. Forgetting a watch and getting a new one, totally different story. Holy crap. It's, it's insane. Yeah. Once, it, once it gets set up, it's fine. It, but the actual, yeah, it's junk. Yeah, well, I mean, they're only on, what, the second gen now, right? So this yeah. is just now becoming a thing. So I, I got to think with the with third generation, they're going to have this fixed. Um, I, I well, actually heard that uh, at the upcoming, what is it, June? WWDC. Uh, WC, yeah, they're get, they're gonna be announcing OS three, uh, Watch OS three. Yeah, well, it's already on Watch OS three. It'd be a Watch OS four at this point. Or is that what it is? Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. I'm uh, not a watch wearer, so I don't know. I'm not either. <laughs> yeah, except except for the Apple Watch. <laughs> to complicate matters further, my daughter received the old Apple Watch, mm. so I had to go through the whole process of putting the Apple Watch on her phone. Which guess what? was not updated to the latest iOS. So this saga keeps going on. And it's the gift that keeps on giving. Right. <laughs> oh, man. I have finally drilled into my family enough that every time there's an update available, they update immediately. Like, oh, it's available. I got to get off the phone. I got to update my phone. Like, yeah. they, I finally drilled that into my family's head. So I don't blame my wife too much because she was in the iOS architecture way back when, when you did an update and you didn't back it up, you could have bricked your phone. So she had that happen a couple of times. So she's usually very conscious of waiting until she can back up her phone, which, again, takes up a couple of hours to back it up to her laptop. And then she does, runs the iOS. But in this particular case, I learned that while taking a long time, the 10.3 iOS on the iPhones is a pretty bug-free process. So I was okay actually going mm -hmm. ahead and doing it without backing up the phone. 
Yeah, I, I remember the good old days when it, it used to be prudent to wait to update your devices or or like even your um, your desktop OS because you want you want the early adopters to figure out the bugs mm -hmm. and then you know once they patch it and then that's when you install. But these days, like almost every time there's an update, it's it's full of security patches because of all of the you know mass hack attacks and malware or um, um, ransomware and all of that kind of crap that's going on. Yeah, that, remember when a zero day was quick uh, and now now it's like <laughs> negative two day, you know? Like, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. It's, like they haven't uh, even released it yet and people are already infected. It's ridiculous now. It's it's not happy. Not good. Yeah. Thanks, NSA. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Just as a side note, I learned that, what is it, Jaguar and Mercedes or something like that are putting Android uh, OS systems in their cars. Mm -hmm. Like okay, yeah. this is not gonna end yeah. perfectly, guys. <laughs> I could see, this the Skynet is here, and it's just a matter of time. Yeah, um, I, yeah I, think I actually I actually want to install the uh, uh, what is Apple's version of it? Car OS, Car OS or something. Yeah, like that. yeah I, I actually want that for my car. But see, here's the thing: the Car OS has, is not trying to control your car or monitor your car itself. It's simply the the entertainment Yet. and the navigation. <laughs> Whereas what they're doing with Android is they're actually like tapping into it's like a like an on screen o o b d two port where it's actually tapping into oh. the system and and sh you know like no I don't I don't want to I miss the cars that were all mechanical that if if the only the only thing electrical on a damn thing was a battery you know I miss those cars why because they ran and they ran and they kept running these oh, it pisses yeah, me off yeah and you got you got seven miles per gallon and well it's uh, not death that's, upon collision. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, but when, I mean, it's not much worse than I'm getting now. <laughs> well, that's true. I was just thinking about as I was saying that. I was thinking back to what, what was it three episodes ago or yeah, something? You were thirteen and a half miles per gallon. Miles. Yeah. Awesome. What do you got? A six point three liter diesel in that thing? Um, it's a six point two liter V eight Hemi, or six point four. Shit, one of those two. It's the <laughs> it's the big Hemi, and uh, I got a power it's, wagon, so it's it's a it's a beast engine. Yeah. Well, at least you have, uh, when Skynet hits, at least you have a mobile command post that you can take on your you know, track. Also, here, here's, here's something that happened uh, last weekend. Uh, they're, they're out in front of our... I don't, did I tell you about this, Kent, when, when I, I pulled the dude out of the, out of the mud? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. God, he was, he was so stuck in there. I ran into it. I've seen him twice since then. And each time, he still got all this mud across his truck and everything else. I'm thinking, yeah, I got you out of that, punk. What's up? <laughs> I did that. Um, now, SP, you've got a bunch of stuff in here for your weekly recap. You got prom, that's insane. Mother's Day, uh, like dance team trials. What is going on in your life right now? It's been a crazy month. It's just been a crazy week, actually. So, yeah, my daughter's 16th birthday. So she's the youngest of three. This mm. is the you know the last hurrah of a kid, really, the sweet 16 birthday. So she turned 16, and she got her temps right on her 15 and a half birthday, six month waiting period. So she was getting her license mm. on her birthday. Well, that's great. Well, we were in need of a new vehicle. So we had that going <laughs> on as well. And my son, who's out of state at college, his car's transmission, which the manual was having problems. So he took it in the shop and needed a new clutch. Well, I would have done it in my garage, mm. but that's hundreds of miles away. So I had to pay some you know, Amco station, whatever, where he was uh, to get the transmission. But he was done with the car at that point in time. He's like, no, I'm just going to sell it for $400. And so I called up the place and they, like put a new clutch and I'll fly down there and I'll get it. I'll drive it back, whatever. And that fixes a problem for me because mm -hmm. I need another car. So uh, he actually finds out that the car is fixed. Oh, I was driving home. I want to come see you. So, okay, drives him home. It saves me time, so that was fine. Get him a one-way ticket to fly back. And I'm like, oh, cool. I get a neat little teenage hot rod that I can drive around for a little bit, have a little bit of midlife crisis, whatever. While I'm driving around, I hear this tick. I'm like, oh, that's not good. So, you know, and something like that could be the water pump, could be a valve clearance issue. You, you never know. It, so it, could be a, replace it, the, it could be a 77 what, Ford Granada about to blow up on 52. Because <laughs> that's what happened to Kent. For, yeah, fair enough. Could be. So I replaced the water pump or replaced the alternator because I had that tested as long as I had the belt off and it was the diodes were bad. Replace that. Replace the belt. I was going to replace the plugs, need new brakes, new shocks, new struts, new everything. And but I kept hearing this tick. I thought, well, that's not the water pump. Must need, need a valve job. But then I thought, you know what? I just want to diagnose this for sure before I start pulling that. 
the top of the engine off. So I took it down to the uh, Toyota dealer. It's a Scion. I took it down to the Toyota dealer. I said, okay, tell me what's wrong. And if it's a valve job, I'll just pay you the $300, whatever to do it. Cause I figured t- my time is not worth that. It is a uh, semi major surgery in a car, but it's mm-hmm. easily doable. I mean, anybody can do it. It's just going to take you some time. I'm like, I want the car. So he said, oh yeah, that tick, it's not coming from the top of the engine. It's coming from the bottom of cylinder four. I'm like, oh crap. So it's some sort of pin that's holding the, the camshaft of the piston together mm-hmm. what, what, that's sheared off. And the mechanic said, oh, yeah, you go ahead. You can drive it. I wouldn't recommend it for, you know, any period of time, but it, you could go forever with it. But if it fails, it's going to be a catastrophic fail. So I'm like, oh, crap. Why don't I, instead of paying for all this money for a new engine, why don't I just shove it in my garage? pull the engine out and do a complete rebuild because it's an extra car anyway. Well, the problem is a 16 year old turned 16, need a new car. So I had to go out, I had to buy another car. And then it was the big surprise because she didn't know anything about this. Right. So the wife was really into, you need to make this into a surprise. So we had this whole day plan, whatever she goes, get her test. And we were like looking at each other at the test. If she doesn't pass, this is not going to go well. <laughs> Luckily, she passed. So she passed. She got a driver's license. And oh, by the way, the reason that she needs a car is she has a job and needs to get to work. And I was actually taking time off of my work to go drive her around. Mm. And that I, I just I couldn't sustain that and still work and have any sort of a leave balance, whatever. So yeah, that doesn't make employers happy when you are leaving all the time. No, no, it d- does not at all. They understood why I was doing it. They understood that there was a, a stop. A, fin- that, whatever. a finite time period. <laughs> yeah, right. So uh, she got the license and then uh, she at 16, you can get a checking account. So she went off to get her checking account. Why I went to the dealer, got her car, put it in the driveway, ordered a big bow from Amazon, put it on the car. It's like those Christmas commercials when they come out. Oh, I hey, got a new car. Yeah. Yeah. So that was the kind of thing. So had the new car. I still have to pull the engine out of the uh, the Scion to, to have that. and Because I can't sell it in good conscience because I know the engine is bad. Mm-hmm. And oh, by the way, all this time, she's got prom and she had dance team tryouts where she made captain. So this place was crazy for 10 days. <laughs> crazy. And I'm glad it's over with. Wow. Then, um, I, it, it, yeah. I was going to complain about my week like I usually do. But man, like yours, uh, yours was way, uh, way crazier. Sounds like a lot of fun, uh, though, in retrospect. I'm sure it wasn't <laughs> when you're going through it, though. <laughs> Amos, yeah. Uh, oh, no, go, go ahead, SP. I was just going to say, all the time, I got five podcasts a week going, too. So, you know, there's yeah. that. Yeah. 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 I, I have two a week, and I, I, I can barely sustain those. Um, and I'm, I'm getting ready to start a third. <laughs> um, well, I'm bringing one back. I'm, bring, I'm bringing one back from Podfade. So I want to get as many interviews done as I can uh, while I have my convalescent leave for my knee. That way I've got uh, several months worth of releases I can put out there and kind of just, you know, I'm trying to really get a good jump start with it. In fact, my first one that I have scheduled is SP himself. <gasps> yeah. Do I know about this? Um, uh, maybe. Hmm. We'll a, have to discuss it afterwards. There, there's a calendar somewhere with an invite. I don't know. <laughs> sure it went to me. <laughs> um, so uh, we were talking about Apple stuff earlier and... The geeky thing that I did this week, first of all, I did homework studio. And what I mean by homework studio is my studio became a homework room because my daughters and their friend needed to record a science project and none of their other parents have any kind of setup. So I let them borrow my setup to record it. And I've only had one year of Spanish. I'm telling you what, man, it's, it hurt my ears listening back to this, trying to match it up to the slideshow and everything else. Like, <laughs> it hurt. That's, um, but yeah. it recovered. I recovered the week by, uh, uh, I, w- I went on to the old Apple store on my phone and I ordered my sister-in-law a watch. So she's actually going to have, she, yeah, she just arrived today. Actually, she, she got it from the UPS guy and then brought it into me and I'm like, mm, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Cause her birthday's not until always cool. tomorrow. Yeah. So, um, yeah, tomorrow I get to, I'm going to try to sneak in, grab her phone while she's sleeping and set it up to her when she wakes up. There's yeah. just a phone. She sure as heck doesn't watch this show. So, <laughs> no. that. and you just happen to have the passcode to her phone um, and her Apple account. Every, well, I, I do have the Apple account because I set it up for, her. um, and all, every, <laughs> all the adults in the house have all of our fingers on everyone else's phone. So, cause we're all, we, we yeah. have what six iPhones in this, in this house, whatever. 
So all of us have each other's passcode in case we need to get into or anything else. And it's kind of like a, a, a built-in trust thing that we have with the kids. Like we, we're not hiding anything from them. You can go look at our phone yeah. anytime you want and that kind of stuff. So, cause we're sure as hell oh, looking the at their phones every time. My, the kids don't have a uh, fingerprint on my phone. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, they, definitely um, got theirs. Well, they, <laughs> they'd uh, nobody, be nobody, for life. No, my wife has it on mine, but um, uh, my, my wife has hers on mine, but those are the only two that are on mine, but everybody else has, can get into anybody else's stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And, my, my girlfriend's got mine and I've got her. Well, she's got an Android phone. Yeah. And, um, she showed me about 700 times, I think her little, like little squiggly thing. And, uh, yeah, I think I've been able to get into her phone once. <laughs> so she does, she could hide anything in her phone from me. Yeah. And I, there's no way I'm going to find um, it. But yeah, I, the ordering it online through the, through the phone is the first time I've ever ordered anything from Apple through their Apple store on the phone. And next day shipping was f- like free. Like, well, I think I ordered it on Tuesday and it, it arrived Thursday morning for free. Um, oh, wow. And, and no, char- no taxes were charged because it was in Anchorage when I, when I bought it, you know, when I actually made the purchase. So when I come out to here at Wasilla, we don't get our 1.3% state a sales tax. Oh, wow. <laughs> that worked out for you. Man. It did. It really did. Um, you know what else works out for me? What's that? Uh, Patreon.com slash Ritual Misery. That's pretty awesome, man. That's where people can go that appreciate our show. They can they can sign up. They can, uh, how's the saying go? Uh, give a fuck and give a buck. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, if, if our... If our listeners enjoy what they hear every single week, they can uh, give us a little something back, and we do our very best to make it worthwhile for our patrons. What what sort of things do we do for our uh, patrons, Amos? We do our very best to withhold things from other people that aren't our patrons. <laughs> that's that's yeah, that's kind of uh, that's kind of how it works out. Um, uh, we do we do extra things like we interview people like Gloria Young. Yeah. Uh, we like to record pre-show and post-show and make that available to our patrons. Yep. Uh, dig up things from the past, all sorts of just weird yeah, stuff. If, if, you're, if you're a patron and you haven't gone to the treasure chest yet and listened to uh, beta, the alpha episodes, you're missing out on yeah. life. Because those are some extremely long, very boring conversations about, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Yeah. <laughs> Is my iPad angled correctly? Can you even see me? I don't know. <laughs> Kyle yeah, says, "One of the boss go to Patreon." Uh, report, yep. So, um, um, so, yeah, yeah, so check it out. There. It's Patreon.com/slash/RitualMisery. And it actually works now because I took the uh, the vulgar tag off of it, so you can actually find it in search. Um. Now uh, we we have a little segment here, and I'll let Kent introduce it. But this is uh, this is just for you, Mister SP. I've been waiting for this. So are you ready? You've got sixty seconds. Get your mind right. right. It's time for Hot Takes on the Ritual Misery Podcast. All right, SP, you know how this goes. I'm going to give you a topic. You are going to talk about that topic, rant, rave, whatever you want to do, until you hear that record scratch, and then you get your next topic. You ready? I'm ready. All right, SP. S&P 500, am I right? Oh, geez. And let me tell you, stocks are just going up right now. It's crazy. But the, you take the political situation into account and you never know what you're going to get at any given day. SP awards. Am I right? Why not? I'm all for awards, especially the podcast awards, which I'm blocked from right now. <laughs> Aren't we all? Surprise plumbers. Am I right? <laughs> surprise. I never want to see a surprise plumber. Sorry, guys. <laughs> serendipitous poppycock am i right serendipitous anything is <laughs> how i roll every single day <laughs> the ritual misery podcast am i right you guys are awesome thanks for having me and this has been fun so far can't wait for the rest of the show <laughs> so I, I don't awesome. know if you noticed uh, the trend on those um but uh, yeah, we had a bit of a theme yeah a little for... bit of a theme on there uh I don't know what, what was it, serendipitous poppycock. That's when we yes. literally pulled out of like four Google searches to try to find that one. <laughs> we spent about ten minutes discussing and workshopping that one. <laughs> yeah, it was. We, we came up with some really good ones, but they were like like podcast names. Like that's not that doesn't work. Can't do that. So right. <laughs> um, now the reason we have SP on here not only because he's, he's pretty cool and does a lot of stuff for the podcasting community, especially in like Reddit. I see his name in there all the time on the podcasting Reddits. Um, you are part of the Gunna Geek Network. Mm-hmm. Uh, a, a, it's like what twenty one shows or something like that in this network. 
And it's, uh, yeah, yeah, twenty one and grown. Yeah, a whole like crap load of hobbyist podcasters. Now that's something that me and Kent have talked about quite a few times. Um, but you're you're kind of a like really all about the hobbyist podcaster. Yeah, we are. We we just podcast like Chris and uh, Nightwing was part of the network when he set it up. Myself and Stephen, who runs the network, we really just started podcasting for the fun of it. We liked the podcast. We liked the the genre. We enjoyed this, the fun, the camaraderie, the community that came out of it. But as I started learning more and more about the business of podcasting, I learned that there is a definite genre of business podcasts, anything from the entrepreneur or services that try to serve, uh, sell their services to podcasters, podcast consultants, uh, different things like Patreon, for instance, you, if anybody that gives you guys money through your Patreon, they are actually taking a cut of that. So it's not a bad thing, by the way, because they're offering a service to enable them to uh, Patreon or patronage, give you patronage or whatever uh, to, to fund your podcast. It's not a bad thing, but they do take a cut of it. So you mm -hmm. just have to consider all that. So any advice you get from those areas, whether it's a podcast consultant, whether it's the owner of Blueberry, whether it's uh, the VP of Lips and whatever, they're all going to come at it from a slant and a bias and give you that information. Also, they come at it from the standpoint of wanting to earn money. So they're going to give you advice just based on you got to do this to earn money. Whereas we're like sitting back going, I'm just doing this for fun. Why do I have to have an email list? Why do I have to uh, have advertisers on my show? Why, if, if I have less than 500 downloads on a show, that means I'm a failure, that sort of thing. So we set forth and we saw a bunch of people that were like us, that were just getting into podcasting and just liking what they were doing. And we thought, Stephen and I thought, look, there's techniques and uh gear and just different things that these guys can do, these newer podcasters can do to make their podcast better, to make it a better experience for the listener. So that we set up better podcasting, not only to make our own network better, to, but to make all hobby podcasts better. And uh, uh, what's a hobby podcaster, right? It's somebody that's generally podcast for fun or builds a community like you guys have, or they want to teach others something out of the goodness of their hearts. There's people like that in the world. So mainly retired people that have been there and done that and just want to say, hey, look, I've, I've done this and I just want to uh, communicate that with others or people just, just do it for a creative outlet. Like some of the the play, the radio plays sort of stuff, there's just people that just are doing that to have fun. Mm -hmm. But in general, it's somebody that has a passion for what they're doing, a passion for their topic. And it's uh, most people are like us. You can see it on the screen if you're watching on Diamond Club right now. It's a home studio. It's in our home offices in a corner in the basement or something like that. And uh, most of the production work is done by the host. Mm -hmm. There's no extra staff. What you see is what you get. So when the podcast audio doesn't come out for seven days, it's because we're busy with real life. We all have real jobs and that sort of stuff. And there's minimal or m no monetization I've decided not to monetize any of my shows because I'm like, I, I just don't want to bother my audience with it mm. because I, I know that what I'm going to get in return is a little bit of appreciation and I might do that someday. But right now I'm like, I just want to give you guys something. So it's no big deal there. Yeah, uh, there's also two uh, just for you guys as edification in my definition, there's also two other types of podcasters. There's an independent podcaster, which is like us, but they're doing it for money. Right. They're trying to sell a service or they're trying to get advertisers for their show or something like that. And then there's the big pro caster. So you're talking about Gimlet Media that does serial. I think Gimlet does serial or five NPR, five. Or something like that. Right. So th those are pro casters. They're actually big companies that are set up to do podcasting for money, not necessarily like ESPN radio, but they do it for money as well. It's a side business for them. So hobby podcasters are a subset of like independent podcasters, but you take away a lot of the pressure on monetization because it's just not there. You're doing it for fun. You're doing it because you have a real job and maybe a little extra income, but you're really just trying to give back. Right. Mm -hmm. So what are some things that it, like Amos, if you were going to tell a new podcaster, what's one thing that they could do to make their show better? What would you do? Engage the audience. Yep. Reach build your to... audience, engage your audience, try to get that uh, rapport together, mm -hmm. make that connection so they stick around. That's very really good. And, Kent, and what would you do? 
Yep. Um, that was actually my number one as well. Um, I, I think, uh, know your topic and, uh, enjoy talking about your topic. Like, don't <laughs> just pick like, well, Oh, there's not enough star Trek podcasts. I'm going to have a star Trek podcast. You better love star Trek and care about it. Right. So yeah. number one is have fun. That's what I've always said for hobby podcasters, have fun. And then the other thing, uh, right that follows right by that is create great content. So if you have passion for something, you're going to create great content. You're going to give something to that listener. You're going to make it valuable to them, whether it's entertainment or knowledge about a subject or whatever. And this is something that I always tell podcast because once you start a podcast, you're like, I like this so much. I want to do another one. I have found that if you do more than you know, Amos, this is aimed at you. If you do more than two a week, you're not going to have time to do all the other stuff that goes with the podcast. You're not going to have time to promote. You're not going to have time to engage your audience. You're not going to have time to produce the content like you should. Now, I am actually lucky where I'm part of a network and I have other co-hosts that step in and do a lot of the work, too. That's the only reason I am able to do five podcasts a week. But if I was just on my own, I two would be maybe too much and just concentrate on that one show. So take the show you have and try to make it as good as you can, basically. And um, another thing that I just want to say is I I know back in the day you could start a podcast off your laptop mic or off your uh, head chat headset or whatever. And that is okay to come in as a guest like that. But if you're going to do a podcast week to week, get yourself a good microphone. I would highly recommend a cardio, a dynamic cardio microphone. And if yep. you need a suggestion on that, you can just hit me up on Twitter at Stargate Pioneer. I'll hook you up. ATR 2100. <laughs> or the Knox podcast microphone now for 40 bucks. It's a little cheaper yep, I'm now. I'm hearing that's the new hotness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm wondering about the the reliability over time with it, but it seems to be a good fit. I did a review on YouTube. If you want to look it up on uh, on uh, YouTube, just Google Stargate Pioneer Knox microphone. Knox is spelled K-N-O-X. Or I believe Steven set up a hot link, so it's uh, geeks.link slash Knox. Hmm. You can, can even just, if you just Google Stargate Pioneer, it actually comes up in the first page of results, your your uh, Knox review. Nice. Nice. See, we research uh, Thank you very show. much. <laughs> I don't Google myself very often, you know, it's just, I, I'm too busy doing other things. So that mm. side of my life has taken a, a side uh, I, chair. I, I tend to Google people that are about to come on my show. So <laughs> I do too, by the way, it's no big deal. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's good to know what yeah. you're getting into, because if you have a guest that comes on, that's like totally controversial, you better find that out before they're on your show. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's totally cool if they are, but I, I want to know ahead of time. <laughs> Um, There's another thing, uh, stay in budget, right? So don't spend your way into oblivion. You're doing this as a hobby, but expect to pay a little bit of money too, because you're not going to do it for free. Not in this day and age. Matter of fact, there is such a business in podcasting right now that there is a divide. It started a couple of years ago. I noticed that and I've been talking about it on better podcasting. It just got worse this year. I mean, the podcast awards is an example, but not the only example. You take a look at the Edison research you take a look at the uh, the bridge ratings and they're all focused on advertising. Mm -hmm. And because podcast listenership is up, that means more advertisements want to come in. That means big business is coming in. I'm worried about the day where the RSS 2.0 goes away and it, something else gets in its place. It'll be like your local cable uh, station back 20 years ago where anybody could be on there. And now it's like, who cares? Of course, we have YouTube now, but you're not on cable. So right. there, there's that. Um, so, so where do you where do you draw the line between a hobbyist and a, a, a not necessarily a professional, but um, an independent? Yeah, an independent podcaster. Where, where do you draw that line? That line would and, come. And I'll give with, you I'll if, give you us as an example. We have a Patreon. We do have yep. a, a small little thing from a site we actually like. By the way, um, we're not making a whole lot of money on it, but we are making some scratch. And we do use that to go fly down to South by Southwest and things like that. So, where do you draw that line between being a pure hobbyist and, and and going beyond that's a great question uh sometimes there isn't and sometimes there is i i would say that if your mindset is to make money you're by definition an independent podcaster i mean if you go into it like creating an llc and a business behind it whatever you you're definitely an independent podcaster and by the way if you make money on your podcast you gotta pay taxes on it too mm -hmm. so i don't think it's just free money out there like going to the casino and win, winning less than two thousand bucks woohoo i just you know, I, I got a little bonus here, a card night with the guys, whatever mm -hmm. you're, you're going to have to pay taxes on that because those entities like Patreon, like Amazon affiliate or whatever, they actually report that income to the IRS yep. because they have to. 
And so all of a sudden your social security number or your business is on hook for that earnings and you're going to have to pay taxes on it. And that's one of the reasons why I don't do it is I just don't want to hassle with the taxes on it, which is another step. I might do that eventually. Stargate Pioneer Productions might become a thing eventually. I don't know, but it's not a thing right, right now. Uh, the line, the, the, the line the, though, the threshold is for that is $600 by the and way. And it's, uh, I'm sorry. The Amos, threshold but, for that is $600 by the way. Up to, up oh. to $600 is just free money. But once you hit $600, you have to claim it on your taxes. There you go. Yeah, so I'll, I'll actually have to claim our Patreon on our taxes this year, which is exciting and dreadful at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. But I, if you just want to do it for the passion of it, and if you want to do it just to, to do it, like I first got into podcasting just to learn how to do it, really. And now I just want to help people to do it. Mm -hmm. Eventually, I might be in the business mentality once I retire and like, okay, this is my second career. I want to own a podcast company, something like that. But right, right now, it's just for fun. I've got all the gear. And I, it's just like Ham Radio, by the way, which Hamvention, I believe, is this weekend. But uh, wow. it, it, this is the Ham Radio of the new age. And it combines a lot, of, a lot of great things. It's great. And it's great for geeks that don't necessarily want to go to the bar and hang out and talk about sports all the time. This is a great avenue for people that just want to create a community where there might not be a community for them. It doesn't have to be geeks. It could be any community out there, whatever. So, yeah, hobby podcasting is fun. And if, by the way, uh, if you're listening to this and you want to start your own podcast, go to betterpodcasting.com, listen to the first six episodes, and you'll learn the basics about what you need to do to set up a show. Yep. yep. Absolutely. And uh, the, the two most recent episodes, you, you guys did a really good job explaining uh, you know, about the monetization and, um, you know, like some of the, um, expectations that you should have or, or should not have actually, when you start a podcast, what was, was the title, uh, prepare to be disappointed or something like that. <laughs> so, so Impending disappointment. Expectations, prepare to be disappointed. Yeah. Everybody thinks they could start a podcast. So, oh my gosh, we're going to get 200,000 listeners right away. Well, no, you're not. If you get 200 okay. listeners, you're going to be doing good. Mm. Oh yeah, like Amos, what what would you say is our um, our most popular episode? How many listeners do you think? I'm like, how many downloads do you think we've gotten on our most popular episode? That would be um, actually, if you give me about ten seconds, I can get, I can get the real number for you. Yeah, 10, I would say it's I would 9, say it's less 8. than two hundred for less than two hundred downloads. I would say for probably our most popular episode. Well, and that's another thing too. Downloads now are, it's so spread out. So I've got live streams on Spreaker. So that's uh, right. numbers there. I have both a live stream and a permanent on YouTube. So that's numbers there. And all those numbers aren't counted. And then I've got, uh, g there are some entities out there that suck up your RSS feed and people listen from there. It doesn't report back to the original where the file is stored. And I can't remember all of them off the time at, up top of my head. I know Google Play Music used to be like that, but they've created an API interface with stuff like uh, Libsyn. So you can, and I think Podbean too, so you can get those downloads. But the Libsyn downloads or the Podbean downloads or whatever downloads, you have to take into account all these other things now too. So it's a lot more disparate and spread out than it used to be. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Because we we live stream, of course. You know, we have a an audience that watches us, but they're most likely not going to go out and also download the podcast. So you know, we we try to count those when we can. Um, but um, but yeah, we've got the YouTube and we've got the uh, you know RSS downloads. We've got you know, it like you said, it's just it's spread out all over the place, and it's um, sometimes it's very. Uh, difficult i guess to, uh, to you know to bring all those numbers in and try to come up with a with a real number that actually yeah. makes any sort of sense uh, yeah. did you figure out amos what uh unique downloads is 74 for the margaret weiss episode and that's the most mm -hmm. wow now we, yeah. we have we have several because that was 74 audio and then we had um that was before we, we were doing video and now we do we'll do like 60 audio and 40 video so it, the the number is climbing, but as far as like a single instance of whatever, seventy four is market wise. Yeah. Okay. And, and, and so. the numbers are are now that I'm tracking them appropriately, the numbers are actually creeping up pretty quick. I like it. Yeah, and uh, we're not actually keeping track anywhere of our live viewers, are we, Amos? Mm -hmm. No, because my dumbass keeps forgetting to go to the site and look at it. <laughs> right. 
Right. So, um, um, yeah, so that's a thing too. So yeah, it's, it's really exciting to see your numbers go up, but yeah. it's obviously not that like, Oh my gosh, if I don't have a hundred thousand by August, like that's it. I'm out. You know, that's, that's yeah. a silly way to look at it. The we, first thing I'll say is don't obsess about your stats because if you do, that's all you're going to be doing and you're not going to be worried about creating content for your next show and getting, uh, building an audience, building a community. You're not going to be able to do that. The second thing I'll say about downloads is, and people are surprised by this. These numbers are put out by Libsyn and they put out in their podcast, Libsyn the feed. Rob Walsh is the vice president of podcaster relations and he aggregates all Libsyn numbers, which if I'm remember, if I'm correct remembering, it's about 35,000 shows are hosted by Libsyn actively. Mm. And so they aggregate all those stats. So it's statistically relevant. So the mean of a podcast is right around, it, it's not exactly this, but it's right around 200 downloads per episode. So that means 50% of the podcasts out there are getting less than 50 or 200 downloads and 50% are getting more. Now, if you take a weighted average, which means he chops off like the podcast that get less than three downloads per episode, gets rid of that, gets rid of like the top 0.5% that get millions of downloads, like hardcore history, and um, uh, WTF with Mark Maron, that sort of stuff. If you take away those uh, outliers, then the average is uh, somewhere between 2,000 and 3,000 downloads per episode. So that just gives you some realistic expectations. If you're a business podcast, if you do a lot of promotion, you're going to get more downloads, but you're also going to pay more for them in terms of promotion. If you get uh, on the mean less than 200. Well, don't, don't freak out. Keep on doing it. It takes people years to build an audience. So, and you might have to change your content. It might be that your content, nobody cares about, but if you're learning the skills, you can change your show, start a new show and bring that content with you, that ability to produce content. And then you're being better and then your promotion is better. You're bringing some of your audience with you, that sort of thing. But if you're starting out cold, you're only going to get 10, 12 downloads per podcast. And that was what the realistic expectations. The other episode that you're talking about is you don't have to make money podcasting. A lot of the other podcast consultants out there that do podcasts about podcasting, they just preach, you got to make money, you got to make money, you got to make money. And I was getting kind of sick of hearing that. Not yep. that it's a bad, but that was not where I was at. And I know a lot of other people that wasn't where they were at either. So that's, again, why we started Better Podcasting is we wanted to be friendly to the non-monetizer podcast yeah and that that was super aggravating for me when when amos and i were first starting out and i was just trying to read everything that i could about how to podcast and how this the whole thing works and i would say at least 90 percent of the places that i went were trying to sell me something either you know you know buy this subscription to this and we promise you'll be the greatest podcaster what like dude shut up this is not what i'm after yeah uh, there's actually some places out there that i would recommend to people that are serious but if you're not serious then there's no need for you to spend money to do that matter of fact the next episode is going to be kind of fun too so we'll just i'll leave that lie for now i won't <laughs> i'll tease it definitely um, looking forward speak, to speaking of monetization we do have a, a, a small sponsor in this show geek awesome. and gamergear.com and uh the reason so we, I'm, I'm going I'm to be honest because I, I like being open and honest. That's what I ask people to do when they're on Undaunted, when I bring that back from Podfade, um, is to be open and honest. And we're telling telling everybody, all of our listeners right now know our numbers. That's fine because we're, we're growing and I, I'm not ashamed of it. If we get 70 people listening to our show, that's more people yeah. than I know personally. Um, <laughs> Geek and Gamer Gear, if you go by there, you buy something, use the code Ritual Misery on checkout, you get 10% off your order free shipping and we get 10% back on that order as well. So yep. far we've made $2 and 80 cents from people buying stuff on geek and gamer Yeah. So it, no, but, but SP is exactly right. Unless you are just serious and dedicated to making money on podcasting and spend all of your time and effort to, to monetize and to promote and advertise. Um, yeah. Like, you know, there's not really any money in podcasting. Not not a lot. Um, well, there not, is, but uh, you have to you, you have to be very successful to do it. So, right. and th yeah. with yeah. that success, I mean, most of the people that do it do it full time. And odds are, you're going to be that's, in your basement and you're going to be doing it part time. Absolutely, and that's that's kind of what I was alluding to. The um, 
Amos and I, you know, I think we put a lot of effort into this show to, you know, try to make it entertaining and, and good and whatnot. But we also have real life, like you were talking about earlier. And um, I think Amos and I do fairly well. We make a little bit of scratch, uh, mostly off of the Patreon, uh, that, you know, basically just it it helps us buy new gear. It Amos talked about going to South by Southwest, which is like a, you know, kind of a the Diamond Club mecca once a year. Uh, where we all try to get together and um, and uh, do some live shows and whatnot, and um, you know that's uh, pat- the Patreon helps us do that. And uh, but it, we're not gonna get rich <laughs> off of this. Uh, we're not gonna be able to pay our our mortgages. Uh, I I just want to get our Patreon number up to fifty dollars an episode so that my wife can finally understand that that it's not wor- <laughs> a worth uh, worthless event. <laughs> yeah, like, that's see, my that's, goal. That's, that's her perspective, and and I just. I don't know. That's it, money is not the reason we do this. It's nice mm. to get that money to like, like you said, Amos, to try to like offset some of the, um, you know, maybe the negative feelings that some people might have about it or mm. whatever. Um, but it's, it's definitely how, it's not how why we I buy t-shirts I, for our live show. I what's oh right yeah, but I what I really love about it, probably above anything else, and um, I just thought of this when when we were talking. Uh, I get to play pretend. I get to pretend that I'm a radio DJ. I get to pretend that, that, you know, I'm a radio host. And I realized like just during this show that that's why I enjoy this. I'm, I'm pretending I'm just a big kid and I get to, I get to play make believe once a week with my friends. I get to make believe that I have friends. (laughs) (laughs) And they make believe right back with you. Yeah, they make believe. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> this is just a huge tea party. That's all this is. Huge tea party party in the backyard. That's um, amazing. Man, there are so many cool things that happened this week. So much cool stuff that came out. Uh jeez. There's gonna be a new dark this is crystal. A great week to be a geek, man. There's there's gonna be a new dark crystal. That I saw that today and it blew my mind. I cannot wait. SP, are you are you a dark crystal fan? I think it was maybe one of the first movies that I saw, but I'm I might be stretching on that. But yeah, I enjoyed it. I think I went back to try to rewatch, and it just doesn't. The story doesn't hold up that well mm. for for what. But the story does. But it, I mean, it's Muppets, right? Mm. And yeah. I'm a big Muppet fan. But I'm all in for this because this is not a movie. This is a TV series. It, yep. it, yeah. Netflix. Netflix. Netflix original, original yeah. ten episode. Uh, season that's going to come. I think was it later this year? I think it's later this year, right? Like this fall. Um, it seems to remember twenty eighteen in there, but maybe yeah, maybe I'm wrong. it is. Yeah, it's either it's either later this year or it's, or it's uh, like the first part of next year. But yeah, um, dude, I I I am beside myself that this is real because they've been talking for years, probably over a decade now about coming out with a sequel to the dark crystal. And I, I think they've had like two or three false starts where they actually had a production team together and just, just didn't happen. And I was like, okay, all right, we're never so, going to get more dark crystal. So it's a, it's a 10 episode series and it's a, it takes place many years before the original movie. So it's a prequel. Yes. And it's, yeah, it's going to have, uh, it's going to have Gelflings in it more than just, um, uh, what was, uh, Jen and Kira was Kira, the yeah, girl one. So. Yeah, you know it's gonna because they were the last two. But is it gonna have Fizz gig? Fizz, yeah. Well, then what I was reading was they're coming up with like I guess dozens of new creatures Hmm. for this series, and that's one of the things that I thought was really cool about Dark Crystal was, you know, there there weren't real animals like Earth animals, like all of like they had a full, you know, uh, uh, fauna and flora that they made up for for this world, and none of them resembled anything that you would see on earth and uh they're coming up with dozens and dozens of of new creatures and things for this and it's going to be i don't know i'm just i'm i don't know if you can tell but i'm super excited about this Mm -hmm. um Uh, now we uh, star trek news was pretty big this week as well dude yeah sp are you are you a trekkie at all i am i I, that was what i did saturday nights with my dad growing up we would watch star trek and i was may over this whole Star Trek Discovery thing mm-hmm. until I saw this trailer. Yeah, <laughs> dude. Yeah. I was like kind of skeptical. I was like, oh, God. 
uh, Star Trek. I mean, Star Trek. I, I love Star Trek. Don't get me wrong, but uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm kind of over it, I think. Yeah, no, I'm not over it. I watched this this first look trailer that they that CBS put out, and dude, I'm in. I am 100% in. This looks amazing. It takes place, I think, 10 years prior to the original series, mm-hmm. and it's definitely in the original timeline, like the TV series timeline, not the the new, uh, like the Chris Pine canon. Right. It's in the original canon. Well, it's all and, the same canon. Well, technically, like if you talk the you know Spock Prime and and all of that, but it's basically like a re. It's almost like an alternate dimension, um, you know, like Chris Pine versus uh, Bill Shatner. It's like, yes, they're the same character, but it's like a split timeline basically. And this this series is it, you know more. Uh, you know, it, it's a TV show, so it follows all of the other TV show timeline. And this show, not only does it look interesting, but it's absolutely gorgeous. Like, it looks amazing. I don't yeah. know. I can't. Can't wait. I Amos, just hope you fall. No, go ahead, SB. I just hope we find out what happens to Archer's dog, Porthos. <laughs> That's a real concern for me because in the original Star Trek J.J. Abrams movie, Porthos is. Something happened. Scotty did something to Porthos, and they never found <laughs> Porthos. So I want to know what happened to Porthos. Maybe we'll, yeah, maybe we'll find out. I don't, I don't know. You know, I just thought of something else that's exciting to me about this. Um, the dude that played Dwight in The Office, he is in this series, and he's playing Harry Mudd, which is an original series nice. character, like the the con man, right? He was in like I, I think two or three maybe four episodes of the original series and uh yeah dwight is gonna play him in this series and i, I can't wait to see him that's gonna be a riot <laughs> amos where do you land on this um this whole star see i've never really been a trekkie very much i mean it's it's all right my stepdad used to watch a lot um but i want to show you something that caught my attention right here okay who is that um, I can't remember the actress's name. She is playing the first officer of the Starship Discovery. That means she's going to be on screen and, a lot, right? Yeah, she I'm is in. actually the main protagonist. I'm in. She's the star of the show. And <laughs> she, she just sees her. I'm in. I'm all for it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's yeah. no she's, Zoe Saldano, but I'm in. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she's not far behind. <laughs> uh, she, she's, uh, yeah, she's absolutely gorgeous. And she's, um, like, uh, what we get to see in this trailer, like, she she seems very uh, believable and um, somebody that I can definitely have empathy with. And uh, yeah, just one more thing. I'm, I'm really looking forward to the series. Now SP, um, if you wouldn't mind, what the hell is Orville? <laughs> <laughs> so did you guys ever watch other space on whatever it was, Yahoo TV or whatever that was? You guys didn't, it was just a, a comic uh, rip off of Star Trek or something. It was, just a short 10 episode thing. So there's that. And I know you guys have heard of galaxy quest. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And that's, I was going to mention that because that's exactly what came to mind when I watched this. That, that's the feel yeah. you get from this. Yeah. So this is a show that's uh, created by Seth McFarlane, but it's, it's got Adrian Palicki on it. I mean, Mockingbird herself is on this show. So, I mean, I'm all in for that. You were talking about who, whoever this is. I'm in for discovery. I'm in this because Adrian Palicki is on it. <laughs> yeah, this looks absolutely hilarious. I had heard something about this. Um, I, I don't remember if it was on on Current Geek or uh, I don't know one of the other shows that I listened to. Somebody had mentioned something about it, and I just I kind of forgot about it. And then when you put this in the notes, like I watched this just prior to going live on the show, and yep, dude, I I laughed for two and a half minutes. I this is gonna be great. It's gonna be good. Hmm. I'm down. Um, now there's some more stuff you got in here, SB, because you brought all kinds of cool shit. Like you, you did not show up empty-handed today. <laughs> no, I did not. I'm a I'm a podcaster, so I know how to bring the content. And in this particular case, I am a rocket scientist, by the way. Literally, agreed, degreed rocket scientist, uh, astronautical engineer, and I frequent the uh, space forums. And space.com had a great article that just popped out a couple of days ago. And it, it, did you guys growing up, did you watch the, the movie The Day After or was that 
before your time. It didn't sound familiar was, at all. It was a CBS uh, depiction of a nuclear war. Mm-hmm. And after they did that and the after effects of it, it was the scariest thing I'd ever seen up to that point in time. It scared me crapless and was like, okay, uh, we need to make sure that nuclear war never happens again. Well, there was this other show that came out called Damnation Alley, and it had this just souped up uh, truck ATV sort of thing that roamed the nation uh, it, again in a post apocalyptic nuclear war. Well, NASA decides to create this rover that's something in between the rover from or the vehicle from Damnation Alley. And probably the aliens vehicle Mm -hmm. and the Martian ATV. And it's supposed to go into their summer camp stuff at Kennedy Space Center. This thing just looks monstrous and is so cool. And I want one. Yeah. 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 I will trade my scion for this. Absolutely looks badass. So two things. I I would trade your scion for it, too. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah no doubt um uh, it's funny that you mentioned that the two vehicles that it that it reminds you of two vehicles actually came to mind for me so i don't know if you remember this old movie from the 80s um uh, what was it uh, space hunter i think space hunter adventures in the forbidden zone i think was the yeah. name that, that's, was, uh, that's a hell of a title that's, that's a good band to- name right there total b movie but i absolutely loved it i had it on vhs and i think i wore that thing out i I probably watched it a hundred times, hmm. um, but it was this, you know, kind of backwater planet, uh, low tech, kind of, well, future tech, but like, you know, poor, low budget, hey. you know, um, kind of like Firefly. It, yeah, yeah. Very similar to that. And they had a vehicle that looked like this sort of. So I think this vehicle looks like a cross between the Space Hunter vehicle and the Batmobile from the Nolan uh-huh. Bat, yeah, that's right. That's what yeah. I was going to say. The Tumbler, the, the, the Bat, Batmobile. Yes, the Tumbler. Right, exactly. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> Looks pretty badass. I just want to yeah, know: well, is, there, is there like a se- separate compartment in the back where you put the kids and you can't hear them while they're bitching? <laughs> yeah. like, it looks like be. it does. Actually, <laughs> I think that's what the, one of the purposes is. But NASA's not saying. Right, right. Because right. it's 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 uh, alien entrapment, but we know what alien entrapment means. <laughs> <laughs> It means those kids are yelling at each other, not at you. Um, one more thing. We we did a lot of talking about podcasts tonight. A lot of talking about podcasts because that's what we do. We love podcasting. Um, the history of podcasts. This I found f- pretty interesting. And I'm not usually one of, person, one of those people who's like, oh, so I'll read the stats on the podcasts. But <laughs> I, I thought this was pretty damn good. It goes through. It gives a little timeline at the bottom. Um, it's, it's basically a general overview, but if you're, if you are podcasting, you should be familiar with the vast majority of this information because it's just where, where podcasting came from and how it developed over the time. Where's Tom Merritt on that timeline? Uh, uh, hmm. I don't know. There is this week in tech that, or yeah, twit in July, 2005. Yep. 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 Um, yep. Of course, 2005 is also the same year that, uh, that BOL came out. It was, no, it was 2006, I think. Maybe I don't know. Maybe I should learn my podcast history. Hey, we can. There's somebody that we can ask next week. Yeah, that's saying. true. That's true. Um, <laughs> that's a. Uh, I I just thought that. Was, and of course, we we'll have links to all this in the uh, in the show. What do I do there? There yep. we go. Now it's not broken. Um, <laughs> not we'll breaking have, we'll, things. <clears throat> they're my things. Um. <laughs> Were you gonna say something, Kent? No, I was wait. I, no, I was waiting for you to to talk. If if you're not gonna talk, I'm just gonna keep talking and running no, my mouth. No, I I, have, I transition very well. I work on my I work on my transitions. Actually, my mouth is like extremely dry. My fucking water bottles out. So, um, <clears throat> now we have another segment, and this goes directly to what you were just saying. It goes like this: Challenge accepted. <laughs> Doing other things in these streets. Yo, that's crazy. This looks like a job for Amos's Balls oh, on the Ritual Misery Podcast. This week's Amos's Balls update is that Molly Wood, who was supposed to be here last week, will be here next week. We have confirmed she has put it on her calendar. I've sent her three separate invites. She said we should publicly <laughs> shame her for not showing up. Um, 
But yes, Molly and Wood. having you deal with SP instead. <laughs> no, that was last week. So this week, you, it, it's yep. all you. Um, but yeah, she will be on next week. If she's not, then we will loudly publicly shame her. Uh, <laughs> yes, for sure. But uh, yeah, she, uh, she, she she's coming on, and I'm still working on uh, PewDiePie and the screen team, and I'm still working on a bunch of people. So, Wow. I bet I can guess who suggested PewDiePie to you. I'm not going to say Fitz's name live, but um, I, be, I bet I can guess that it was him. It, it, it might have been. It might have been. Either way, <laughs> it's, it's on the list. Um, harassment has uh, has just started. So, yeah. But m- next week will be Mollywood, and uh, that's going to be awesome. So, yep. Yep. Looking forward to that. It should be a great show. You guys are going to have some fun. Yeah. she's pre- Well, we did a little meetup at, at South by with her. Uh, like a last minute thing, and we just sat there for an hour shooting the shit about current events stuff like that. And th- her her sense of humor and the way it wraps into tech and the way it wraps into business is amazing. Um, definitely yeah. an inspiration for anybody who wants to be into uh, journalism, especially in the tech sector. Yeah, she is. Uh, yeah, so she's fantastic. I don't want to say too much about her. We'll we'll learn all about her uh, next week. But yep. just know that she is absolutely amazing. I'll um, be listening in. Oh yeah, Ibit. I'm I'm waiting to talk to Ibit at uh at Nertacular. Is where I'm going to hit it up. up. <clears throat> it up, Ibit. There we go. Ibit, Ibit. Yeah. You're gonna hit the. Um, you're gonna. So hit it, it, if you Ibit. if you can hear, my voice is kind of out tonight because I had surgery yesterday. I got all the dry mouth going on from all the drugs they're giving me and everything else, which small price to pay. But uh, sometimes when you have like weird stuff going on in your head, it's because you have a cold. Well, right. we looked back, and. SP, you were cold. You had a cold once, and you tried to tell someone about it, about the benefits and detriment of having a cold. Um, so we, we acquired that, and we brought it onto the show because we, it's really good advice. I mean, this I think you were like maybe 8 or 10 when you wrote this, but it's really good I, advice on, on what's going on with the cold and how to stop it and how to recover from it. So, Ken, if you wouldn't mind, why don't you read this letter here we have. Um, and uh, uh, let, let it see if see if see if it holds up for uh, in SP's eyes. Yeah, yeah, uh, we're really good at, at finding things in the trash, and uh, yeah, so found this crack team of mate. investigators. <laughs> yeah. All right. So here we go. You can always tell when you're getting a cold because your helicopter will feel stuffy, and you will have a password ache. The first thing to do is take a couple of podcasts, then go into your prom and rest. Drink plenty of RSS feed. Sometimes it's fun being sick. Food is brought to you on a rocket scientist so you can eat and watch TV. And your temperature is taken by putting an audience in your content. If your temperature goes over two degrees, a doctor should be called. He will thump you on the sector and say, we need to make sure nuclear war never happens. Then he will ask you... He will ask you what ball you ate the night before and x-ray your stomach. Finally, he will give you passionate advice on how to get well. If you do just what he says, you'll feel amazing in no time at all. I, I think I'm it holds very up. very passionate about drinking my RSS feeds. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's what you got to do, though. I mean, that's how you get over it. That's what I'm trying to do right now. But, you know, I'm trying to, trying to drink this RSS feed, but it's not out yet. So it's, I'm just like, I'm, I'm RSS starved right now. That's what's happening. Hey, Miss, you're podcasting the day after. It's a little bit of a podcasting hero complex you got going on, man. That's uh, awesome. It's too easy to skip out on a podcast, so you, you got to go. It's 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 one of I'm one just, of our goals. Hey, Miss, I'm just glad you decided to wait until after the show to take your meds. Yeah, because I remember the last time you took your meds right before showtime. Mm. That yeah, how, how, how'd so that well. turn out? That's so well. Uh, what, you don't remember much about it. Was one of the meds the little blue pill? Uh, no, those those aren't the meds for this podcast. That's a that's a Saturday night thing. That's what that is. I see. <laughs> right. All right. Um. So this week we decided not to do one of these. And instead, we went with two years, two thousand attempts, blood, sweat. Broken bones, puke. What's next? <laughs> yeah. yeah. SP, did you watch this? I did. I did. I was inspired, actually. It reminded me of way back in the day when I was learning how to water ski and I was slaloming. 
and I would try to cut in and out and try to get the cut really close. Matter of fact, this is actually pretty close, except for I was on the water and he's on stairs with like cement or blacktop or whatever on the bottom. Mm -hmm. So I had the advantage of water, right? But this guy, it was amazing watching the persistence in just to get the shot. It, that's all he wanted to do. He just wanted to get the shot in two years, about 10, tr 10, tries, he, uh, 10 tries a year, so about 20 times uh, that he went out to do this. And I can only imagine the only reason why he went out once a month was because he was so banged up afterwards that he needed to heal before he tried again. Yeah, there, there's actually yeah. one scene where you, where you can see where he's got road rash on his back where his T-shirt didn't cover from the, uh, from the asphalt. Um, so Unreal. this guy, he's, it's Christian Flores, and he's a skater, not a very good skater by his own admission, but he's trying to do an impossible off of a, like a seven seven stair flight of stairs. Under. Actually, I think it's a laser flip. I think is what it is. It's all the same to me. Whatever whatever button button combination that is in Tony Hawk Pro Skater Two. Um, <laughs> exactly. <clears throat> but he keeps going and keeps going, and it shows. I mean, I I don't know that they're not repeated. But it shows probably sixty attempts at this one jump. Oh, it's yeah, it it's not repeated. It's different spills every time. And some yeah. of them look really, really bad. At one point, he he uh he breaks a rib. That's it right there. And then yeah. he bangs yeah. his head on the concrete and like he just keeps going and keeps going. There's the bang. Uh, yeah. It, that's this, the one this, thing that I thought about this. He really should have probably wear wore a helmet. But I know a lot of skaters don't like helmets, so you know we would. Teach their own, but yeah. if you're going to do this and you're not that experienced, I would wear a helmet. Yeah. So when I was a teenager, I was going to be a, a pro skater, right? Mm. And uh, so I get up on a skateboard and uh, I, I could push around, whatever. I was like, all right, I'm going to ollie. I'm going to do a kickflip. I'm going to do all of this cool stuff. Um, I got the board into the air. I landed. The board went one way. I went the other. I hurt myself really, really bad. And I haven't been on a skateboard since. See, I thought uh, I was talking to Kent, the pro skater. <laughs> uh, yeah, that dream was a very short-lived one. And um, I, I realized that it hurt way too bad, and I wasn't going to do it anymore. This guy, this guy's <laughs> persistence is just insane. Yeah. I, uh, I, I, just, I was still trying to do kickflips in, um, in Okinawa. So I was like, what, 24, 25? Out in front, yeah. of, out in front of your apartment trying to do yeah. kickflips. I, I, I mean, I landed a couple of them. That's like my greatest, my greatest point of fame. <laughs> Um, landing the kickflip from you know stop to stop, but yeah, this this story though it just he, it shows. I mean, he just keeps going. He decided this is something I need to do. I need to accomplish this. I need to beat this task. I need to make this happen, and he did. And uh, yeah, it's it's pretty awesome. I liked it. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Not a TED talk, but inspiring nonetheless. If you have a TED talk or other inspiring video um, that you would like us to play and comment on. Go ahead and shoot that to us on Twitter at Ritual Misery or hit us up on the Patreon. Uh, send us a message there and tell us, give us a link of the story, to the yep. TED Talk or whatever else you would like us to talk about. Um, this is the point of the show where every podcaster hates, every one of them, whether you're a host or a guest, where we look at you deep in the eyes, SP, and we say, if we are not getting enough of you, where can we get more? Did notice your Shatner imitation there. It's getting pretty good there. You know? <laughs> if people want to hear more about geeky things, they can go to the gunnageek.com network. I'm on five shows there. Gunna Geek show is a general geekery show, and I do my rocket scientist stuff there every week. I also do a couple of TV podcasts called Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and the general Marvel podcast universe i also do a show called the starling tribune on the cw show arrow so we talk all about dc stuff over there and i do a show called legends of shield long box edition that's the weekly marvel comic drop i talk about pod faded shows i think i can successfully call that pod faded now but i think i'm going to start it back up this week so we'll go from there and then uh, also if you're interested in hobby podcasting better podcasting uh, betterpodcasting.com but all these shows can be found and my contact information can be found at the Gunna Geek Network at gunnageek.com very cool um, Kent how about yourself man yep Twitter is the best place at rm underscore del noche um, I haven't been so active on there recently I've got a lot of um, family stuff going on getting ready for a kid to graduate from high school uh, so that's pretty crazy 
Um, but I hope to get back on there and be more active again in the near future. So check me out there at RM underscore Del Noche. I'm Del Noche just about everywhere else, including on Untapped. So if you're a beer dude like me, check me out there. Very cool. Um, you can find me at Ethan Kane on Twitter and Ethan Kane pretty much everywhere else or Ethan Kane 77 if, if the Ethan Kane was already taken, usually by me because I forgot the password. Um, <laughs> <laughs> And I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw a quick shout out out there that uh, uh, if if you're part of Diamond Club or you're part of the Frog Pants community or anything else, if and you're not in the discords, you're missing out because half of the content on on these networks is these amazing people in the Discord between those two discords. Um, great stuff. We got uh, uh, Tuesday night and Friday night we're doing uh, Jackbox trivia. Uh, once a month we do a movie night where we rip apart a movie, uh, old classic movie. Um, there's just ton of thing, tons of things going on in the Discord that aren't being broadcast uh, and and advertised really well on the network. So uh, DiamondClub.tv, the Muffin CDN is up and roaring, and man, there's tons of content. Never nothing going on. I know that's a double negative, and I said it in a purpose. Um, <laughs> you can find the show at Ritual Misery on Twitter. You can uh, submit any ideas or reviews of the show. Uh, ritualmisery.reddit.com. Cruise on by there and, and tear it up. If you really feel the need to give an iTunes review, go ahead and hit the five-star button and knock the show down as hard as you can. In the words, we want five-star shitty reviews. That's what we're looking for. Five-star shitty reviews. Um, and, of course, there is this right here. Um, Incompetech.com for uh, uh, Kevin McLeod. Uh, amazing, amazing dude. Got some great music out there. Let's us podcasters use it. And uh, we can't thank him enough. So for me, for Kent, and for SP, this has been your Ritual Misery Podcast. See ya. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>